Welcome everybody. What I want to do is show you um, how to apply the quotient rule of exponents. And I wrote my R backwards because, I don't know, I wanted to write backwards. So, um, the quotient rule of, of exponents simply states, if you have a number raised to an exponent, and then is divided by that same number raised to an exponent, what you can do is subtract the exponent. So take your base and subtract the exponent. So, let me kind of explain this by uh, looking at some numbers. Let's say we have 3 raised to the 5th power. So that means that multi that representation of that would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, right? Now that's going to be a big number. I don't know what that number is, but we don't need to know what that number is to solve this problem. Just understand that 3 to the 5th power is 3 multiplied by itself 5 times, correct? Well, what if I want to divide that by 3 multiplied by itself 3 times? So that would be 3 times 3 times 3. Now, one thing you need to know, 3 divided by 3 equals 1. Right? Any number divided by itself, 3 goes into 3 one time. And just a little hint, actually, we could also say 3 raised to the first power equals 3. Right? Because remember, 3 multiplied by itself one time equals 3. And so I'm just going to write this, hence... A little example here. And that's why we say any time a number is raised to the zero power, it equals one. Think about that. Three to the first divided by three to the first. We know that answer is one, but if you do your rules of exponents, three to the one minus one is zero. Three raised to zero equals one. Now, once we know that 3 divided by number equals 3, you can also say that, okay, well, those cancel out to 1, those cancel out to 1, and those cancel out to 1. Therefore, I'm only left with 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. Okay? So that's really the basics um, of your thing, of your exponents. And you could also say 3 to the 5 minus 3 equals 3 squared. Right? So let's look at how we can apply our quotient rule of exponents. Let's say I have x to the 12 divided by x to the 7. The main important thing I want to do here is just rewrite it. So I have x to the 12 minus 7. Therefore, my answer is x to the 5th. And even if you have numbers, as long as your numbers are exactly the same, you can still work with it. So therefore, this is going to be 2 to the 8 minus 5 which equals 2 to the third power, which we can simplify as 8. Now, we get a little bit dip more difficult, right? Now we have some problems um, where we have 10, A, B, and C. So now we have multiple bases. Now remember, I only told you, you can only subtract your exponents when you have the same base. So therefore, I can only work this for A divided by A. I can only subtract those exponents. And I can only subtract the B from the B and the C from the C. Now, if you notice, I don't have a C on the bottom here, right? There's no C. So what am I going to subtract C's exponent from? Well, we can write C raised to the 0 because we know C raised to the 0 equals 1. So this is just a regular division problem. 10 divided by negative 2 is a negative 5. A, we can write to the first power divided by A to the first power. So that would be 1 minus 1 b to the fifth minus 2, and c to the first power minus 0. When I complete this, I have a to the 1 minus 1 is 0, b to the third, and c to the first power. Now, a to the 0 we know is 1, so therefore we're no longer going to have an a term. c to the first power is just equal c. So my final solution is negative 5, b to the third times c. In this problem, you notice that we have some negative exponents. And if you remember um, our rules of negative exponents, if you have you know, x to a negative m, that can be rewritten as x to the m. So I'd be more than happy to rearrange these problem. We can easily put this now as a denominator and put this back up as a numerator. But I'm just going to work the problem out by, adding, by subtracting with my negative numbers. So I'll have 12 divided by 18. Now, 12 does not go into 18 evenly. 
However, this is a fraction that I can reduce. I notice that I can divide the top and bottom both by 6. So that's going to reduce down to 2 thirds. Then I'll have a to the negative 5 minus 10, b to the negative 4th minus 3, and c to the 1st minus the 1st. Okay? So therefore I have 2 thirds, 2 is my numerator, and 3 be on my denominator. Negative 5 minus 10 is going to give me a negative 15. Uh, so I have a to the negative 15. I'll have b to the negative 7. And then I'll have c to the 0 power. As I spoke about before, c to the 0 power is going to just equal um, 1. So when I finally write my problem, what we notice is if, to write these as positive exponents, I have to write them as the denominator. Well, what else is in my denominator? My 3 is in the denominator. So to finish off this problem, since I'm running out of board space here, I'd write 2 is the only number that's still going to be in my numerator. So I have 2 divided by 3 times a to the 15th times b to the 7th. Okay? So those are some examples. Now what I'd like to do is kind of um, erase these, give you guys some practice problems that I want you to write down. And I want you to try them on your own. I'll go through some tips, and then I'll show you how to do them. Okay, welcome back again. Uh, what I have is I have four problems up here on the board that I'd like you to go ahead and write down, please. And then try them on your own. I've already just gone through the whole tutorial on the basics of it. Um, and then what I like to do is try these, and then I'll come back, show you some tips, and then I'll come back again and show you the rest of the solutions. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back through some tips here in case you kind of maybe got stuck with a couple problems um, to help you solve these. So remember, when we're using our rule with exponents, we have I, the quotient rule. If I have a, an exponent divided by another exponent with the same base, I can subtract those exponents. Okay? Um, a couple things, some tips here is... One thing is, you know, you can always separate out the, um, you can always separate them out by multiplying these out. Now, this might be a little bit long for you to do it, but it might be helpful three to sixteen times. Write that fully all the way out and just cancel out your um, your threes that it makes up. For here, the problem is, you can't do this. This is already a simplified version because your bases are not the same. So I threw it in there to trick you. Hopefully, gotcha. Here, just remember for last these problems, the tips is remember, ladies and gentlemen, that whenever you have um, whenever you have your two exponents, they have to be, you can only subtract their exponents when their bases are the same. So here, I can only subtract my exponents with y and y. I can't do anything with the x. And the last thing I want to mention is my negative exponent rule. If you have an x, a number raised to a negative exponent, that can lead x to the m or if you have 1 over x to the negative m, that equals x to the m. So I'm actually going to show you two different ways in a second how to solve this one by using your um, product rule and also your quotient rule. So all right, let's go and give these another shot see if you guys finish them up. Okay, now let's go and solve these. Remember, you're just going to, when they have the same base, you should subtract the exponents. So you have 3 to the 16 minus 18, which equals 16 minus 18 is 3 to the negative second. Therefore, remember, I can never have a negative exponent. I have to write this as 1 over 3 squared, which equals 1 ninth. This problem, my bases are not the same, so that is already simplified. This problem, I have 4 eighths, which can be rewritten as 1 half y to the third minus y, oh, that's a, y to the first minus x. Well, y to the third minus y to the first is y squared times x. Therefore, I can just rewrite this as y squared times x, and 2 is my denominator, so I can remain over 2. 
Both of these can be written either way. All right? Last one. Here, I'm going to do this problem twice. You notice here they all have negative exponents. I, let's say we write this without negative exponents. This now has to come up top. This has to come below. And then this would have to come below as well. Okay. So that's how you'd write it with positive exponents if you case wanted to do that and you like matter, like the power rule rather than the quotient or the product rule and the quotient rule. Anyways, it still remains the same. I can't divide negative 14 by 8, but I can reduce it um, to its lowest terms, which would be to divide it by 2. So this would be negative 7 over 4, negative 8 to the negative 12 minus a negative 15, b to the negative 10 minus 20. So therefore, negative 12 minus a negative 15, that becomes a double positive. Therefore, I have negative 7 divided by 4 equals a to the third power. b, negative 10 minus 20 is a negative 30. So now, this is positive, so it's going to remain by my numerator. And this is negative, so it has to go down to my denominator. So therefore, my final answer would be negative 7, a cubed, divided by b, to the 30th power. If you look at it this way, again, we could get the same answer. Here, negative 14 divided by 8 can reduce down to negative 7 over 8, which would be a to the 15th over a to the 12th. And then on my bottom, then I have b to the 0 minus, well, b to the 10th times b to the 20th would be b to the 30th. Oh, I'm running out of space. My bad. It occurred, so then on the bottom, I got to subtract these. And then here, I just know, already know on the bottom, since they're on the bottom, I, I don't subtract them from anything. It was just going to be b to the 30th. Well, a to the 15th minus 12 is a to the 3rd. So I have a negative, sec, negative 7, a to the 3rd, a times b to the 30th. So therefore, I just kind of threw that extra out there in there, um, example in there for you. But um, I hope this uh, using the quotient rule helped you. Just remember, you have to have the same base. And when you have the same base and you're dividing two, uh, two numbers with exponents, just subtract the exponents. So thank you for watching. Hope that helped you out.